Hello, students. In this video, we'll explore the Cobb-Douglas production model and see how we can maximize production based on certain parameters of cost per labor and cost per capital. So the Cobb-Douglas model of production asserts that production is a constant, so this is a constant, times the labor to the power alpha times the capital invested to the 1 minus alpha. So here L is labor, K is capital, and P is production. There's a constraint on this problem, though. There's a constraint on how much production you can have because there's a cost per unit of capital and there's a cost per unit of labor. So if we let, let's let little a be the unit cost of labor for one unit of labor, and let's let little b be the unit cost of capital. Then we know that there's a fixed amount of spending power you have on this. So there is a amount, let's call this amount little p. Little p is going to be a times what? A is the cost of labor, so it's going to be a units of L units of labor plus b times the, the capital, that's the cost of capital, so that's me times k. And this is how much you can afford to spend. P is the total amount of spending allowance you have to maximize your production. It's given by this formula. So our objective now is to maximize, our goal is to maximize, maximize P, the production, subject to the constraint that P is equal to A L plus B K. And so this is the natural setup for Lagrange multipliers. So we're going to use Lagrange multipliers, which asserts that the derivative of the function you're trying to optimize, the gradient of the function you're trying to optimize, is proportional to the gradient of the constraint. So what we have here, and so of course this P is a function of L and K, so this little p is a function of L and K, and our capital P is a function of L and K. So what we can do is we'll do the gradient in the L and K variables. The gradient in the L and K variables of the production has to be equal to a scalar quantity, a multiple of the gradient with respect to L and K of the overall pr price you have little p. And so we can easily compute these things. So the left-hand side, we're going to do the derivative with respect to L first, right? So now what do we have here? We have L to the power of alpha, right? So now we have to remember how we do the derivative of L to the alpha. So if we're doing the derivative, the derivative with respect to L of L to the alpha will be alpha L to the alpha minus 1 using the power rule. And so what we'll have over here is on this left-hand side, we're going to have alpha, and of course there's the constant C out in front, alpha C, and then we're going to have L to the alpha minus 1, and then we're going to have K to the 1 minus alpha. That's going to be my L derivative, and then comma, so this is the L derivative, this is the L derivative. Then we have to do the K derivative. The K derivative of this is going to be C, and then we're the derivative of k to the 1 minus alpha, so I'm going to put a 1 minus alpha down here, 1 minus alpha, l to the alpha, that stays put because l is constant with respect to k, and then we have k, 1 less than this, so I'm going to have a minus alpha. This is the k derivative. I treat l as a constant. This is equal to lambda. And now we do the derivative of little p with respect to L. The derivative of little p with respect to L is going to be what? It's going to be just a, lambda a. And the derivative of little p with respect to k is going to be little b. And now we have two equations from this. The first equation we get is that a times lambda is equal to 
c alpha l to the alpha minus 1 k to the 1 minus alpha. And then b times lambda is equal to c 1 minus alpha l to the alpha, and then k to the negative alpha. Now we also have a constraint in this problem. We know that a plus l plus al plus bk is equal to p. So if we add these equations together, what we get, we'll have lambda times p. So we can do a number of different things over here. The first thing we can do, though, is that we can notice that if we take these equations and we divide them by each other, we can get lots of cancellations. So if we divide these out, what will we have? Well, there's two things we can do. We can find lambda first, and then we can find um, we can find lambda first, and then we can actually find what the optimization is going to be. We can use our constraint as well. So the last equation we have is p is equal to a l plus b k. So now. This is our constraint. So what I can do is I can multiply this equation, this first equation, by L. Then I'll get A lambda times L is equal to C alpha L to the alpha, bump up the power, 1 minus alpha. And then I'll multiply the bottom equation by K. Then I'll have a K B lambda is equal to C 1 minus alpha L to the alpha, k to the 1 minus alpha. And now if I divide these equations by each other, I will have what? Dividing these equations, note that they both have L alpha k to the 1 minus alpha, L alpha k to the 1 minus alpha. What will we have? We will have, let's do this bottom equation divided by the top equation. So I will have k b lambda is going to be over L a lambda will be equal to this bottom term over this top term. But notice that the L to the alphas and the K to the 1 minus alphas are going to cancel out. And we're going to have a what? We're going to have a C 1 minus alpha over C alpha. And now the Cs will cancel out, the lambdas will cancel out. And now we have a relationship that what? That K over L from this equation. So we have that K over L is equal to is equal to a over b. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by a over b times 1 minus alpha over alpha. So this tells us that k is equal to a over b. So a over b, so those are parameters in our problem. a and b are parameters in our problem. And then times 1 minus alpha over alpha times l. So here's our relationship. So this is the relationship between capital and labor, which will give me, which will maximize my production. Now I can actually find out what these are going to be because I can use this equation over here. And let's solve one of these equations just for labor. So in particular, we would have P is equal to A L plus B times K, and K is equal to A over B, one minus alpha over alpha times L. And therefore, those b's will cancel out. So I have a factor of a on top and on the bottom. So I can say that p over a is equal to L, and then 1 plus this quantity over here. So that was going to be a 1 minus alpha over alpha. We can turn this L over this 1 over here into an alpha over alpha, so we'll have a 1 over alpha. So it looks like the L that we find over here, if we solve our algebra correctly, will be I'll have an alpha plus 1 minus alpha. That'll be a 1 over alpha. So I will have a 1 over alpha from this term over here. That's a 1 over alpha. If I multiply by alpha, I have that, P, that L is equal to alpha times the pr total price that you're allowed to spend over what? over A. So this value of L is going to optimize the, that's the optimal amount of labor to use to optimize the production given a certain cost budget. Then we can solve for K. Now I have the relationship for K. What is K? K is equal to this quantity over here times L. So we can solve for K. This will tell me, using algebra, that K, the optimal K, is going to be A over B. Well, this A over here will cancel out with this A in the L. And then I'm going to have a P over B. So I'll have a P over B that takes care of this P and this A, and then this B. 
over here. And now this alpha in the numerator is going to cancel with this alpha. So I'm going to have a p over b, 1 minus alpha. And so this value of k and this value of l will optimize my production given a certain budget of little p. Thank you very much.